Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Brenda Romañelo, tu profesora de español. Bienvenidos a la clase de español de hoy. Hello, my name is Brenda Romañelo and welcome to your Spanish class. Hoy vamos a ver el verbo dejar en español, el verbo dejar. So today we're going to have a look at the verb dejar in Spanish, what it means, the different meanings, how it works. We're going to see plenty of examples and also some useful expressions. So how this class is going to work, I'm going to speak Spanish and English. I'll try to speak as much Spanish as possible so that you get used to hearing Spanish even for some explanations such as this and then I'll do a quick translation so that I have you, you don't have to worry, you'll be able to understand this lesson perfectly fine and then master this verb that is a little bit, um, it creates a bit of confusion or it sounds a bit complicated, but today, after today, you're going to be able to use it perfectly fine. Muy bien, empecemos con la clase. El verbo dejar, sí, el verbo dejar en español, por lo general significa to leave. Podemos traducirlo al inglés como to leave. Muy bien, pero no es siempre correcto, sí. Uh, eh, cuando queremos decir si queremos decir el significado de la oración to go out or to go, en ese sentido no vamos a usar el verbo dejar, vamos a usar otros verbos, por ejemplo, el verbo salir y el verbo ir. Ok, so most of the time we can say that el verbo dejar means to leave, but it's not always the case. It's not the case when we want to express that someone or some, uh, that we go out. If we want to say to go out, we are actually going to use another verb, which is el verbo salir, to go out. And then if we want to express to go, then we are going to use the verb ir, which is to go. Uh, let's have a look at what, what I mean by this. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Por ejemplo, si tú quieres decir en inglés I left my house at 6 p.m. Uh, ¿No es cierto? Con la idea de que salí. Muy bien. La idea de salir. ¿No es cierto? With the, so if you want to say I, le, I left my house at 6 a.m. With the idea of leaving, right? Or to getting out, right? Of the house. In that case, we're not going to use the verb dejar. Vamos a usar el verbo salir. Vamos a decir en español, salí de mi casa a las 6 de la mañana. Muy bien, salí de mi casa. ¿Tiene sentido? So, uh, as you can see here, when we're talking about to go out, yes, uh, in that case, in Spanish, we're going to use a different verb. But in English, of course, you use the verb to leave. Uh, another example that we're not going to use dejar with is I left work early. Sí, I left work early. En español vamos a decir me fui del trabajo, sí, me fui del trabajo temprano o salí del trabajo temprano, sí, with the idea of I, I, I went out, yes, out of work or I, I just left, no, with the, that verb in the reflexive irse, sí, to suddenly leave, yes, or to leave sooner than expected. Muy bien. Vamos a ver el tercer ejemplo. So let's have a look at the third example that we have here. I left my phone at home. See, I left my home, uh, my phone at, at home. We're going to translate this into Spanish as dejé mi teléfono en casa. Dejé mi teléfono en casa. Y este es el significado, la forma en que vamos a usar dejar. So when you say I left my phone, that's the idea. This is when we are going to use el verbo dejar en español. But just to avoid any confusions, we're going to see what it also means. What are the meanings of this verb so that you can actually learn how and when to use it. Muy bien. Antes de ver los significados del de verbo dejar, vamos a conjugarlo, muy bien. Vamos a conjugar este verbo, lo vamos a conjugar en dos tiempos verbales. El primero lo vamos a conjugar en el presente y la segunda parte en 
el pasado porque vamos a usar estos verbos la mayoría del tiempo muy bien so uh, before we move into the meanings i want us to uh, conjugate this verb and we're going to do it in two tenses the present and the past and that is because we're going to mostly use it with these uh, two tenses so vamos a ver el presente quiero que repitas después de mí see i want you to repeat after me por favor yo dejo, yo dejo, I leave, muy bien, yo dejo, tú dejas, tú dejas, vos dejas. ¿Qué significa vos? ¿Sabes? Do you know what vos means uh, in this case? Well, in any case, vos. Vos is the you in Argentina and some other uh, parts of uh, South America, such as Uruguay, also some parts of Colombia, they also use vos. So if you want to have a look at that, it's just a different uh, pronunciation. Vos dejas. Tú dejas. Vos dejas. Él, ella, usted deja. Muy bien. Recuerda, usted es de fo la forma formal de decir tú. So remember that usted is the formal you, but we conjugate it the same as a third person singular, él and ella. Muy bien. Nosotros o nosotras dejamos. We live. Dejamos. Vosotros, vosotros. So you all in Spain. Vosotros or vosotras. So this is you all in Spain. Decimos dejáis. Dejáis. Muy bien. Ustedes dejan. So recuerda. Nosot vosotros y ustedes significa you all. Sí. You all. Vosotros lo usamos en España y ustedes en Latinoamérica. Muy bien, esa es la diferencia. Y ellos, ellas dejan. Ellos, ellas dejan. Perfecto, vamos rápido a ver el pasado. El pasado vamos a usar el pretérito específicamente para hablar de acciones pasadas. So, we're going to uh, have a look at the conjugation of the pretérit, yes? That, remember, uh, I'm not sure if you know, but we have two different past, simple past tense in Spanish. One is the pretérito, the other one is the imperfecto. Most of the time with these examples, we're going to use the pretérito. So, that's the conjugation we'll have a look at now. And we say, I left, sería yo dejé, yo dejé. Tú, vos, exactamente igual, exactamente igual. Tú, vos, dejaste. Muy bien. Él, ella, usted, dejó. Nosotros, dejamos. Vosotros, dejasteis. Ustedes, dejaron. Y ellos, ellas, dejaron. Perfecto. Ahora que tenemos la conjugación, vamos a ver los significados. So now that we have the conjugation sorted, figure it out, we're going to have a look into the meanings of the verb dejar en español. Let's have a look. El verbo dejar básicamente tiene cuatro significados. Si ¿sí? puede variar un poco el significado, tiene cuatro significados eh, principales. Muy bien. Eh, <coughs> Número uno significa to allow or to let. To allow or to let. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Muy bien. So, there's five different meanings that we, sorry, four different meanings that we can give to the, el verbo dejar or, or how we use it in English. We'll use el verbo dejar for these four different meanings. The first one, número uno, es to allow or to let. To allow or to let. It can also mean, también puede significar to leave behind or to abandon. You can see here there's two different ideas. One is to allow, to let. The other one is to leave behind, to abandon. That's dejar. Número tres, to stop or to give up. Yes, so when you were doing something and then you stop, we're going to use el verbo dejar for this idea. Y número cuatro, to leave alone or to release. Muy bien, to leave alone or to release, to let go, yes, to let go. Those are some ideas as well that we're going to use with the verb dejar. Y la número 5 es un bonus que quiero enseñarte hoy con algunas expresiones con el verbo dejar. Muy bien, algunas expresiones con el verbo dejar. Perfecto, entonces vamos a empezar con algunos ejemplos. Vamos a ver el, 
significado número uno. So now we're going to have a look at some examples and we're going to talk about each of these meanings with full-on examples so that you get to understand when to use the verb dejar en español. Muy bien, entonces vamos a ver el primer uso, vamos a ver el primer significado. So let's have a look at the first use, the first meaning for this verb. To allow or to let. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Eh, la idea es esa, ¿verdad? Cuando eh, es permitir, ¿sí? El significado es permitir algo o eh, dar permiso para que algo suceda, ¿sí? So the, the meaning here is to allow, to let something or someone do something or something happen. That's the idea, ¿sí? To um, stop um, providing resistance or something like that. So let's have a look at some examples. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Mi jefe me dejó salir temprano. Mi jefe me dejó salir temprano. So my boss um, let me get out early, yes, or let, allow me to leave early. See, that's the idea, no? Me dejó salir. Puedes ver aquí, puedes ver, me dejó salir, he allowed me to leave. Mamá, déjame ir a la fiesta, por favor. Mamá, déjame ir a la fiesta. So in this case, is um, allow me or let me go to the party, please. Yes, please let me go to the party. And in this case, we have the imperative mood here, yes, of course. Please, allow me, let me go. Eh, otro ejemplo, Ana dice, let's have a look what Ana says here. Oye, Marta, ¿sabes el teléfono de Tito? O tienes el teléfono de Tito, ¿sabes el teléfono de Tito? Y Marta dice, mm, déjame ver, otra vez, el imperativo, déjame ver, lo voy a buscar. Ok, let me have a look. So Marta, sorry, Ana is asking, do you know Tito's phone number? And Marta is saying, oh, let me have a look. I'm just going to check it out. So let me, allow me to have a look. I'll look it up for you. Yes, let me have a look. Otro ejemplo. Let's have another example. No me dejaron entrar al grupo. It's un poco triste. No, it's a little sad, this example. They didn't allow me to enter the group or el bar. See, if you go uh, to a bar underage, they won't let you in. No me dejaron entrar al bar o al grupo, al restaurante, al Louis Vuitton, ¿no? Llegaste a la puerta y dijeron, mm -mm, no, no es para ti, right? So, uh, they didn't allow me to enter the group or the bar, the restaurant, Louis Vuitton. They look at you and say, no, I'm sorry, you need to go, okay? So, no me dejaron entrar. Uh, otro ejemplo, me dejas usar el baño, por favor, ¿sí? Can you let me or would you allow me to use or would you let me use the bathroom, the restroom? Okay, so can you see here all these examples? Puedes ver aquí el uso de dejar como to allow or to let. Puedes ver aquí como traducimos estas frases, estos ejemplos en inglés con este significado. Can you see here how we use it with the meaning to allow or to let? Very good. Muy bien. Vamos a continuar con el uso o el significado número 2. So let's have a look at the second meaning or the second use for this verb. And it is to leave or to abandon. So that's a different idea here, right? Es la diferencia es que allow or to let, it seems that something you're allowing, you're um, getting rid of the resistance to allow something, right? But to leave, it's almost as if it's a different kind of action here, just leaving behind, yes? Um, or to abandon. So this is more to leave behind here, yes? To leave behind. Mm? Not just with the idea of to just remove yourself from a spot, it's more the idea of to leave behind or to abandon, yes, to leave behind. Uh, vamos a ver algunos ejemplos, let's have a look at some examples. Dejé mi tarea en la mesa o dejé mi tarea sobre la mesa. Esta es la excusa más vieja de todas, ¿no? Uh, so you can tell your teacher, I left my homework on the table. Yes, yes you did, I'm sure. So as you can see here, yes, I left it behind or I, I put it somewhere else and I, and I forgot it with the idea that you forgot it or that you left it uh, somewhere else. 
no sé dónde dejé mis llaves, ¿sí? Perdí mis llaves. I lost my keys. No sé dónde dejé las llaves. I don't know where I left the keys. Yes, yeah? so I left them somewhere. I abandoned them somewhere. They are somewhere. Muy bien. <clears throat> su marido la dejó por su mejor amiga. Sí, es dura. Este, este ejemplo es duro. Pero quería darte un ejemplo con la idea de abandonar. ¿Sí? La idea de abandonar. Su marido la dejó por su mejor amiga. So, her husband left her or abandoned her with, uh, for her, yes, for her best friend. ¿Sí? So, she, uh, he abandoned her for her best friend. You can see here the idea of abandoning or leaving someone behind. Yes? Um, Dejaron al niño aquí solo, ¿sí? So they left the kid here by himself or alone, ¿sí? O ya dejé los niños en la escuela, ¿sí? I left the kids already at school. So it's, it's not always when you leave someone that it means you abandon the person. It can also be just leaving, leaving them, dropping them off. Yes, ok. Muy bien. ¿Puedes ver la diferencia aquí entre el significado número uno y el número dos? Espero que sí. I really hope that you can see the difference in, the, in meanings when we use el verbo dejar as to allow or to let and then when we use it to, with the meaning to abandon or to leave or to leave behind. Continuamos. Entonces, el número tres, el significado o el uso número tres es para decir to stop or to give up. Yes, yeah, so that's a third meaning, that's a third use. And in order to have this meaning with the verbo dejar, we need to use a structure. Yes, yeah? so this is the structure that we're going to use to give it this meaning. And what is this meaning to start with? Is especially to talk about something that we were doing before for routines or habits, whether good or bad. Usually we like to talk about more of the bad ones than we decided to, go, to do good things. Uh, so things that we used to do in the past and that then we no longer do, that we stopped doing or we gave up doing, ok? So, por ejemplo, eh, la estructura es dejar más, la preposición de más el verbo en infinitivo, muy bien. Dejar de más el verbo infinitivo. ¿Qué significa que es un verbo infinitivo? El verbo en infinitivo es un verbo que no está conjugado. Por ejemplo, dejar es un verbo en infinitivo, ¿sí? So, uh, what do we mean by dejar then plus the preposition de and then a verb in the infinitive form? What is a verb in the infinitive form? It's a verb that is not conjugated, ¿sí? Yeah? So, in Spanish, remember, we have three forms of uh, infinitivos, all the words ending in ar, like hablar, trabajar, bailar, dejar, ¿ok? All the verbs ending in er, like comer, leer, beber, and all the verbs ending in ir, como vivir, escribir, etc. So, what I mean by that is that we're not going to conjugate this verb, no one is going to perform the action, because we are already performing the action with this verb. This is the verb, el verbo dejar is the one that is going to be conjugated. Muy bien. Conjugamos el verbo dejar, más de, y luego ponemos el otro verbo, ¿sí? So that's how it's going to work. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Dejé de fumar hace 10 años. Dejé de fumar hace 10 años. As you can see here, we have dejé, which is the verb conjugated, de, la preposición, and then the verbo fumar and sin ar. So we leave it here in the infinitivo. I really hope that you can see what I mean by this. So I stopped smoking 10 years ago. In English, we're going to use the ing form, not the case in Spanish. You don't need to use the gerundio here. Ok, dejé de fumar hace 10 años. I stopped smoking 10 years ago. Esta es verdad. Oh, lo siento, yo antes fumaba. Uh, era otra persona, no sé cómo lo hice. Muy, muy feo. Eh, la mejor decisión que tomé en mi vida. That was definitely the best decision I've made in, in my entire life. Ok, dejé de fumar hace 10 años. Ana dejó de salir con sus amigas los sábados, ¿ok? Ana dejó de salir con sus amigas los sábados. So, Ana stopped or gave up going out with her friends on Saturdays. Now she goes out on Friday. I don't know. 
Juan, eh, ¿cómo bajaron de peso? Juan pregunta. So Juan is asking here, how's you guys lost that much weight? And Marta replies, dejamos de comer pizza todos los días. ¿Cómo bajaron de peso? Dejamos de comer pizza todos los días. Dejamos de comer. ¿Sí? So as you can see here, we have different forms of the verb dejar because we have a different person performing the action in dejé de fumar is I quit smoking or I stopped smoking. I gave up smoking, dejó de fumar, we're referring to Ana, she did, and dejamos is nosotros, see, ¿sí? we stopped eating pizza every day. Good idea. Ok. Muy bien. Número cuatro, sí, el último, el siguiente eh, significado para el verbo dejar es to leave alone or to release, to let go. Muy bien, vamos a ver esta idea. Let's have a look at some examples with this idea. Relájate. Déjate llevar por la música. Ok, relax. Let yourself go and follow the music or something like that, yes? Uh, allow yourself. Yes, here we are talking. Look, can you hear me? I'm saying allow. That's the first use. So everything is kind of similar here with that idea to allow yourself to let go, to let something else happen, no? Déjate llevar. Allow yourself to follow, be taken by the music, ¿no? O uh, let go and listen to the music. Muy bien. Ya, eh, llamé a la policía, ¿sí? Llamé a la policía y me dejó en paz. Muy interesante. Me dejó en paz. Dejar en paz es una expresión que la vamos a ver en unos minutos. So, I called the police and he left me alone. Yes, or he, le he left me in peace. Uh, how we say it in Spanish. We'll have a look. This is an expression that we're going to have a look into in a few minutes. Carlos. Me duele el ojo. Ah, ha, ha. Me duele el ojo. Ay, ay, el ojo, el ojo. Right? My eye hurts. My eyes, it's hurting. Can you see my eye? And Maria tells him, déjalo. Déjalo. No te lo toques más. Stop it. Uh, I'm saying stop it. How amazing is this verb? I love it. So leave it alone. Yes, don't touch it. Don't touch it anymore. See, when you, your eye is hurting and you just keep touching it and you make it worse, but you can't help it. Well, leave it alone. Don't touch it. Déjalo. No te lo toques. Puedes ver aquí la idea de to leave or to release, to leave alone, okay? So, um, as, you, as you heard me, I did say stop or allow and because all these meanings are kind of interchangeable but I think there are four distinctive sort of images that I want you to picture in your head when we're thinking of the use of the verb dejar. Muy bien, y entonces el uso número 5 o la, las expresiones que vamos a ver ahora en la número 5 son, por supuesto, con el verbo dejar. So now we're going to have a look at some expressions with the verbo, with the verb dejar. Eh, la primera expresión que quiero que veamos es dejar en paz. Vimos un ejemplo hace poco, ¿sí? Y bueno, es una expresión que significa to live alone, yes, to live in peace, uh, would be the literal translation, ¿sí? Eh, y básicamente significa dejar tranquilo, ¿sí? Dejar a alguien tranquilo o tranquila. So this expression, dejar en paz, means to live alone, yes? Or to, um, a synonym would be dejar tranquilo o tranquila. Tranquilo means... Uh, relaxed, yeah, relaxed or quiet, yeah, cool. That's the meaning of this adjective here. So that's the other um, use, these expressions that we're going to see now. They have el verbo dejar más un adjetivo. So, to, so these expressions use el verbo dejar and then an adjective to follow. So let's have a look at these expressions in Spanish. Dejar preocupado o dejar preocupada, ¿sí? Recuerda, porque es un adjetivo, vamos a cambiar femenino o masculino dependiendo de la persona. Yes, so here we have to match the adjective with the person talking, yes? So it will be either uh, preocupado, worried, yes? For if, if a man is talking, will be worried, preocupado, 
preocupado. And if it's a woman talking, then we're going to say preocupada. Dejar preocupado o preocupada. So that means to leave someone worried. Yes? You, you worried me. You left me here all worrying about you. Yes? Something like that. Dejar preocupado o preocupada. Dejar contento o contenta. Dejar feliz. Yes, I am content. We would say in English, we just use it with the verb to be. I am content with this. I am happy with this. Me dejaste contenta. Sí, me dejaste contenta. Me dejaste. So you left me happy. Yeah, <laughs> if that makes sense. But it's not that you left me and you moved away. It's that I remained here happy, content. Yes, that's the, the idea of this expression. Dejar encerrado, ¿sí? Encerrado o encerrada. Por ejemplo, dejé encerrado a mi perro ayer. Yes, so I left my dog locked in by mistake yesterday. So I left my dog locked in. Yes, encerrado, enclosed. Uh, what would be the opposite for encerrado? Would be abierto. No, abierto o abierta. Por ejemplo, oh. Dejé la puerta abierta de mi casa. See, that's a horrible situation when you leave, leave your house and then you realize you left the door open. Okay, so that's what, how we would say it. With dejar and then open. The next one, dejar prendido o apagado. See, prendido significa turned on and apagado turned off. Yeah, so for example, a light or the toaster, the kettle, all these things. Uh, you can left them uh, turned on or turned off, okay? Muy bien, prendido. So this is all appliances. It works with appliances, electricity, things that have a switch. Yes, okay. Muy bien, so these are a few examples of how you can use el verbo dejar con algunos adjetivos. Y bueno, esa es la clase de hoy. Esos son los cuatro significados, the four ways to use el verbo dejar, y eso, and some bonus uh, expressions that you can use in Spanish. And now, I would love to hear from you in the comments. I want you to know, I want you to tell me, yes, I really want to know, ¿Qué vicio o mal hábito has dejado tú? ¿Qué vicio o mal hábito has dejado tú? So what um, bad habit, yes, did you stop or give up um, in your lifetime, yes? So for example, I share my, my story. Dejé de fumar hace 10 años. Dejé de fumar hace 10 años. Es eh, mi historia, sí, mi mal hábito. So I stopped smoking 10 years ago. Y quiero saber... ¿Qué has dejado tú? ¿Sí? What did you leave behind, gave up, allow yourself, release yourself from it? Eh, quiero saber de ti en los comentarios. Recuerda, si te gustó este video, dale un like, suscríbete a nuestro canal y deja tu comentario con la respuesta de la pregunta. So if you like this video, give it a like, comment below, subscribe to the channel and leave your comment based on this question that I just asked you. And if you want to learn more Spanish, just make sure that you go to the website and check out all the Spanish resources. I'll leave you the link in the description box. Muy bien, hasta luego. Adiós.